On number 27, it says that uh, line WA is tangent to the circle, which means it intersects at this one point right here. Uh, and then it says that the measure of WVX here is 268. So the first thing we're going to find out is how much is left. So we're going to do 360 minus 268. And what we're left with is 92 degrees. Now, it, we're supposed to find the angle AWX. It's an inscribed angle because notice that vertex is on the circle. So it's the arc divided by 2. So what you're really going to do is 92 divided by 2. And what that leaves the measure of angle AWX to be is going to be 46 degrees. On number 28, we're told that AE, let's see, AEC is 110 degrees. We're told that arc AC is 75 degrees, and we're supposed to find BD, which I'm going to call X. <coughs> Remember that if you have an angle inside, but not at the center, it's going to be the average of the two arcs. So this arc plus this arc divided by 2 is equal to the angle. So let's set that up. The first arc plus the second arc divided by 2 is going to equal that angle. And so now if we take this, the first thing we want to do is we want to take the 110 and multiply it by the 2 so that when we multiply both sides by 2, it cancels on this side, leaving me with x plus 75 equals 220. And then the next thing we want to do is we want to subtract 75 from both sides so that we get 145. So the measure of arc BD is going to be 145 degrees. On number 29, we're told that PN here is x squared. We're told that QR here is 11x. And we're told that PTN is going to be this 9x plus 4. <coughs> so we're going to set this up. Uh, the two arcs, so the x squared plus the 11x, divided by 2 is going to equal this interior angle, 9x plus 4. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to multiply both sides by 2. When I multiply this side by 2, they're going to cancel. And so you'll see that there. And then we're going to multiply this whole side here to remember to use our distributive property by 2. These cancel. And I'm left with x squared plus 11x is equal to, let's distribute, 9x times 2 is 18x. And then 4 times 2 would be 8. Now let's move everything this way. So I have x squared. If I do minus 18x from both sides, 11x minus 18x is negative 7x. If I subtract 8 from both sides, that's going to be minus 8 equals 0. Now we have a couple options here. We can use quadratic formula, completing the square, or factoring. I tend to prefer to factoring. So remember with factoring, we want two numbers that multiply together to give us negative 8 and add together to give us negative 7 which would be 8 and 1, but let's figure out which one's negative. I need it to be negative 7. So try it. Negative 8 times 1 is negative 8. Negative 8 plus 1 is negative 7. So when I factor here, I get x minus 8 times x plus 1 equals 0. Now we're going to solve both of these. So x minus 8 is equal to 0, so x has to equal 8. When we add 8 to both sides, <coughs> x plus 1 equals 0, so when I subtract 1 from both sides, x is going to equal negative 1. Now, let's look and see if we can put a negative 1 in there to see if it makes sense. If I put a negative 1 in here, that makes this a negative 11, which is not possible. So this answer is out, but we can keep the positive answer. That one will be fine. <coughs>